Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Zach Hilgenor. And if you're watching this, you are interested in processing wing true data. Uh, the topic for this lecture is pre-processing for Wingtra uh, and Trimble data. So start off with who you're listening to here. Uh, if you don't know me, if you're watching this at some point or you're new to uh, Dr. Ian Walker's lab, uh, or you're seeing this on YouTube or something, uh, hi, my name is Dr. Zach Hilgendorf. I'm a physical geographer and geomorphologist. I'm a Part 104 small UAS license holder through the Federal Aviation Administration. Uh, and I'm a lover of all things close range remote sensing, uh, whether that be drones, quadcopters, fixed wings, or uh, terrestrial laser scanners. I've used both pretty extensively at this point in my career. You can see this picture of me on a beach dune system in Northern California to uh, the right here. That is the wing trail, um, an older version of it that we're going to be talking about and focusing primarily on in this little lecture. Before we continue, we're going to stop here because we need uh, a few assumptions and some requirements. The first assumption, really the only assumptions, you've got data to process. You have either inherited data sets, you're training on data sets, or you've collected your own data sets, uh, which include Wingtra and base station data. Uh, that base station data needs to be static base station data um, versus an RTK survey, for example. Um, so if you have both of those assumptions, or if, if, if those assumptions are met, um, or you have some other way to get uh, opus data or uh, corrected static data, which we can talk about in another video, um, you're clear to continue. The next thing, the requirements, you have downloaded all of that data off of your Wingtra SD card. You've downloaded your TO2 or TO4, if you're using a Trimble R12 base station data, you downloaded it off of those controllers. Uh, you have Wingtra Hub installed and updated on the computer that you're using, and you have the uh, executable program convert to Rhinex downloaded and installed. And if you need to figure out where to download that convert to Rhinex file, we can do that here. Uh, if you just Google Trimble Rhinex converter, uh, it'll bring you to this page. It should be the top search uh, hit. And we're going to look at two things that we need to download, um, which is a bit confusing because you see one big bolded thing that says convert to Rhinex version 3.14.0. Uh, we want to download convert to Rhinex v3.14.0, but uh, it's almost too hard to tell, but there is a uh, slightly blued out uh, little link in the bottom and in the verbiage that says the latest version of Trimble configuration utility must be installed prior to the operation of this utility. If you don't have it installed, convert to Rhinox will not work. So click on that link, it'll bring you to another download page, download that, install it, then install convert to Rhinox. And when you have installed convert to Rhinox and you open it up, you'll be met with this type of a screen. Um, just a simple three drop down menu kind of thing. We're going to click on file and we'll click on open. And we're going to navigate to where our TO4 data is stored. Um, in this case, you can see that's what it looks like. It's just a coded name. Um, you can, when you download it, you can name it something if you would like, or just keep it this, uh, this name. The date modified is based off of the uh, UTC time. So when you're trying to make sure if you have, you know, a controller head with a bunch of different data sets on it, um, you're going to look for the most recent or the one comparable to when you were flying your Wingtra. Just note that if you're in uh, the US and you're using something like Pacific Daylight Savings Time, you're going to have to convert that to UTC to know what time you should go to grab for that uh, file. And then once you open it, it'll show a screen like this, just a bunch of data readouts, approximate uh, XYZ coordinates, the systems that were used, et cetera. And you can see on the bottom where it says scanning complete, that just means it read the file. Next, we're gonna go ahead and click on file again, and we're gonna hit convert file. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to unpack this TO4 file into, I believe it's five different components, uh, which are going to be useful when we want to uh, 
include that into our Wingtra data uh, at processing, or when we need to send one of those files up to the online positioning user service or OPIS uh, through the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So we'll get to that in just a few slides, but that's the, the, the reasoning for wanting to unpack this data in the first place is so that we have access to those component files. Uh, when it's done, it won't really say anything on the screen itself, except for in the bottom there where uh, underneath scanning, it says converting and then the readout again, and then it just says success. So it's, that's really all it is. Um, but uh, if you go back into the folder where your TO4 file is being stored, you'll see this. Now there's five different, or sorry, four different uh, files in there aside from the TO4. So you will see uh, G, L, N, and O files. Um, those are just the different components that go into making up your TO4 file based off of uh, your satellite collection data. So the O1 that you can see there, uh, the 22O file, that's the one that's gonna be the most important for our next step, which is sending data off to Opus for correction. Um, it's kind of easy to tell, it's the biggest file that gets uh, unpacked. You can see here, the TO4 file is only 5,180 kilobytes. But the uh, TO, or 22 or 22 O file is 26 point or 26,000 kilobytes. Pardon me. Um, so that's a that's a, a good way to know that you one that that file is unpacked correctly, uh, and two that that's the right file that you're going for because it's usually the biggest. And then. We want to send this off to Opus or the Online Positioning User Service through the National Geodetic Survey hosted by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So what is OPIS? Well, it's basically a way to correct your base station data to the continually operating reference system or CORES network. So what we do is we say so we have a static survey. So the base station that we're using has been initiated in static mode. So all it's doing is refining its uh, position in time and space. It's not worrying about a rover as if you were doing an RTK survey or real-time kinematic survey. Um, so all it's doing is refining its position in time and space. And then we get it, we download it off of the controller head or the uh, receiver head, pardon me. And then we unpack it. We have this O file. We're gonna upload that uh, under where you see it says choose file, you're gonna navigate to where you have that stored. You're gonna uh, double click that. It will load that. It'll upload it to the Opus uh, solution data set, or sorry, the Opus uh, website. Then you're gonna go down, you're gonna pick the GPS receiver that you used. Um, if you're using a Trimble, if you just type R12, or if you're using an older model R10, uh, you should see it pop up pretty quickly. Um, a quick note, Trimble has both the R12 and the R12i. In our case, uh, we use the R12 during this data collection. So if you just type in R12, you'll see it says TRMR12 none. That's the one you're gonna wanna select. Uh, next, you're going to select your offset height. So when you set up your base station data, you will collect, um, the height of your base station above the surface or above a benchmark, you're gonna input that height uh, here. Uh, so 1.347 meters above your mark, that's just your antenna height. Uh, you're gonna input a uh, email address. And then depending on the length of your survey, if it was uh, sub two hours, you're going to upload it to rapid static. If it was two hours, to 48 hours, you're going to upload it to static. Now, often, very often we want uh, to use that static. It's just a more refined position. Rapid static, uh, if you're just out there and you're just doing a quick survey uh, and it runs for you know 40 minutes or something like that, no worries. It'll just be a rapid, a rapid static upload. Um, the NOAA or the Opus solution when it comes back might It'll, it'll say that so that you know that it uploaded to rapid static instead of static. And really that's just to know that 
it's not as refined as it could be. When you hit send it or submit it, uh, it'll give you this readout here. Uh, we're using a standard uh, solution format is how we're solving it. It just gives us our readout. Awesome, cool. You're gonna have to wait for that. Uh, typically, it'll take a little while for that to get back. You have to wait until at least uh, midnight UTC usually uh, before it'll actually send you back a correct data set. If you send it early, uh, you'll get an error or it just won't be able to be submitted. So you kind of got to wait. Uh, at least I usually wait till the next day to send off my Opus solution um, just to make sure that it's we've crossed that midnight UTC, the new data sets are logged, and then you can continue on with your data set processing. Now we're going to move into Wingtra Hub. Uh, as of recording, this is late August of 2022. Uh, we are on Wingtra Hub version 2.6.0. Um, and a quick disclaimer, we are working, as I said, with the Trimble R12 system. Wingtra does not yet have the tr uh, Trimble R12 uh, offset, antenna offset heights in the uh the program the r10s it does the r12s it does not so we have to take a couple extra steps but when that update comes and there are plans to get the r12 data built in appropriately when that update comes some of these steps will be rendered unnecessary um that's just something you're going to have to watch for and watch the change logs on and i'll kind of highlight which ones those are um just to help kind of streamline things uh, in the future for you. So first off, we're going to want to hit that Wingtra pilot projects folder, and we're going to basically path to the folder where our data sets are being stored. Uh, in this case, I have them, I have three different uh, projects directly from the SD card. You don't want to just pull out the images. You want to pull that entire project file. Uh, off the SD card. And when you do, um, I just have it stored somewhere locally. Uh, here you can see Dangerman 1, Dangerman 2, Dangerman Bluffs 1. Uh, all of these are, are just Wing Trip Pilot project folders. Um, you can just stay in this root directory. You don't need to click into any of those subfolders. So just stay in the root directory folder. And what will happen is when you hit select folder, it'll show this it'll register that there are three uh correctly formatted folders that it is seeing awesome that's what we want um and the next thing that we're going to want to do is start geotagging so you see on top there's that geotagging option so we'll click on that tab uh and there's going to be a few things here that we want to do so before we start setting up our uh, GPS data. First thing we want to do is make sure you uncheck that output geotagged images. Sometimes it'll default to that being selected. What that does is it copies all of your images and rewrites the EXIF data on those new images. It really just makes things bulkier and more time consuming. You don't need to do that because what'll happen is uh, we're going to be working off of a uh, Excel CSV file. We don't need the raw images themselves redone. So don't worry about that for now. Make sure that's unchecked. Uh, make sure the next thing, if we look in the bottom left of the screen, uh, we see PPK ready or post-processing kinematic ready. That's the great thing about the Wingtra uh, is that we have the ability to run a PPK solution to refine our imagery based off of our base station data and our corrected base station data with our Opus solution. So that just refines our data sets even more. If the appropriate dongles are not in the computer that you're working off of, that won't be there and it'll say that there's no PPK solution or processing uh, available. So make sure those are in there. Make sure you're seeing PPK ready. Uh, and then the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is click on base files, uh, where you see that arrow in the, the middle of the screen. On the top, 
click on base files and it's going to bring us to this next screen it'll pop this up here where you see selected base files right now there are none uh, because we have uh, we haven't brought any in but let's take a, a quick moment to look at that note that says when using a Rhinex format, please select all files covering your flight duration, including observation data, navigation messages, and others. So what that means is for, if for some reason, um, you needed to have multiple uh, base stations brought in. So say it was chunked into hourly uh, files for some reason. Sometimes the R10s would do that. Um, the R12s, I haven't seen it do that so hopefully that you know it doesn't default to that for some reason but if you needed to bring in multiple uh you would just select all of those base station files those those unpacked base station files the o n and g files that we were dealing with and just bring all of them in speaking of which if you hit the add files button it'll just open up a windows windows explorer uh navigate to where your trimble data is the unpacked rhinex data that we were looking at and that's what uh this menu is looking for so it'll filter only those types of files out we can see here from before uh the 22g 22n and 22o files you're going to select all three of them and bring them in and you will hit uh to apply them so you can see we have three files selected. Uh, you're gonna then hit the apply to all button, um, which basically says we wanna use all three of these base files across all three of the flights that we have in you know, here. So in this case, I've got three projects that I'm trying to refine um, and it's just going to apply this uh, base station data set and basically place it into each of the data file or data folders within each of those file projects so the cool thing here is it's writing uh new folders or new data to some of the the folders within the wing trip pilot uh folder itself so then you'll hit apply to all and once it's done you'll see uh base station or base files ready across all of them now you can just go in and add them manually if you're just trying to bulk process and you've got it split over maybe three or four days worth of data uh and three or four days worth of base station files you can just go and click the drop down or the add the, the plus button next to any of the base files within those uh three separate projects below um and just add them manually that's not a problem um, but if you're dealing with something that was the base station was running for five hours and you have three data sets from that you can just process it all together uh, next and this is here is one of the only specific to the uh, r12 when it is not uh, updated in wingtra hub so this next step might not need to be done uh, in the future but we're going to click on that little drop down arrow next to base files and you want to look at that antenna offset number where here we see in the box it says up 1.60090 meters write that number down because it's going to be used in just a few steps as i said once the r12s are built into and, and in, included within the uh, standard standardly recognized processing for wingtra hub this step will be unnecessary, but for now, uh, until such a time it is, we're going to have to copy that number down. So by this point, moving on and kind of taking another uh, diversion here, you should hopefully have received your Opus solution. If not, you're just going to have to pause here uh, until that solution comes in. Um, but provided that it has, this is what it looks like. You get an email uh that says opus solution the base station file that you uploaded and basically just the the readout of uh a bunch of numbers and, and letters here um that's just opus's coded uh formula for for storing its data uh so we see ngs uh or national geodetic survey opus solution report all computed coordinate accuracies are listed as peak to peak values for additional information you can see that 
uh, it lists the user, the date, the time that this was run. Notice, as I said, it is in UTC. Um, it will tell us the basically what we told it, the uh, antenna name, the uh, height of the base station, um, the overall root mean square error, uh, and a few other necessary readouts. It tells us when the base station was running. So we see start and stop as well. Um, awesome. If you keep scrolling down in that email, you'll start to see the solved reference data. So what we care about are those four numbers that I have uh, boxed. The latitude, uh, which is in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Uh, the west longitude and the uh, ellipsoidal and orthogonal heights. So EL is for ellipsoidal, ortho is for orthogonal height. Um, take a picture of it, write those numbers down, make sure you know what ones they're referring to, but we want to keep those uh, readily available because we're gonna be using all of those numbers here in our next steps. So back to Wingtra Hub. So here we're going to have clicked on the uh, edit base location uh, tab, which is under the base, basically where you input the base data. Um, so under geodetic, uh, the first tab there, you're going to be uh, inputting a few different numbers. Make sure you have that specified base station antenna offset selected. Again, that's not going to always be necessary because we aren't always going to be needing to input the uh, ARP APC offset heights. So for now, this is something we have to do, but when a Wingtra updates, we're good. Um, make sure you put a name that's easily rememberable and recognizable that you know what it is. You've written it down somewhere in your notes or your field book or what have you. Um, the coordinate system, we have collected our data uh, typically or as our lab does in NAD 83, EPSG 6318. Um, obviously all of the inputs and all the things we're inputting are in lat long coordinates. That's okay. Just know that the data was collected and the base station data is in the NAD 83 format, um, not WGS 84. So make sure that is set up right. We're gonna go back to our Opus solution and there are those numbers that we care about for this precise step. We care about the latitude, um, the, lo the west longitude and the ellipsoidal height. Now for proper formatting, we want to note a couple things. So let's look at the latitude, for example. Uh, the proper formatting for that should be 34 space 27 space 2.75778. Wingtra will recognize the format that's in. So just make sure that you, you use that proper formatting. I think you can even copy paste it directly from the Opus solution. Just make sure those spaces are in there. Otherwise it'll throw an error at you. Um, and then for the West longitude, note that we need to make sure that we include a negative sign in front of the West longitude. Um, otherwise you will be on the wrong side of the planet. So once you've put those in, here is where you will actually write those numbers. Under the latitude and longitude, which you see here, that uh, the height that we had um, referenced uh, will go here, that's 7.886. And then remember that number we wrote down a while back, uh, our antenna offset up, that's gonna go right in that antenna offset up box, that 1.6009 is gonna go right there. So that's why we needed to look at our base station readout uh, on the screen prior to this on Wingtra Hub and actually record that number because that will be a different number uh, between different data sets. Um, or pardon me, different base station files. Uh, if you're using the same base station file across everything, no worries, you just have to record that once. And then the ARP APC offset, that is our antenna phase center offset height. Um, the 
it, it is a constant that's provided in the Trimble specification documentation. For now, uh, again, this is one of those steps that you won't likely have to do in the future, but for now we have to. Uh, know that that number is 0 0.1419 meters. Um, again, that's just from the Trimble spec documents. Um, so just note that number, always use that number uh, until that update comes out. Uh, if you're using the R12, that is specific to the R12, it does not go towards the R10. There's a different offset number there, but that's not something you have to do with the R10s. Uh, and then, if you click out or you, you save it and you come back in, um, you'll notice that that degrees, minutes, seconds converts wholly to decimal degrees. So like I said, Wingtra Hub knows what that format is. It converted it automatically. You're good to go. Again, apply to all. And you'll see that uh, NGA underscore OS dash 98, 23 July, 2022. You'll see that base station that we just wrote written to all of them. Awesome. Now for the big step, you are ready to uh, hit the uh, run PPK solution button in the bottom right corner there. Um, so hit that button and it'll start running. And once it does, um, as it's processing and as it's moving through things, you will see uh, hopefully this little commentary box pop up that says finished. Uh, PPK processing summary, PPK fix 100%, mean horizontal accuracy 0.02 meters, mean vertical accuracy 0.04 meters, geotagged summary uh, 1,313 images tagged. Um, there will be times, and I'll throw this out there uh, to assuage any fears, there will be times when you have a 99.98% fix and it's thrown out two images. That's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not an indication of anything worse. If it really drops, um, there might've been some issues with the base station data overlap with the flight. Um, that's not something we can really fix in this exact scenario, though there are ways to get around that um, using the cores network. If you are able to pull uh, proximal or nearby located uh, cores data, um, like I said, we'll work on that in another video probably, but for now, just expect that it'll be a pretty good fix. Um, I've never had issues with the wing today that we've collected and we've collected dozens and dozens of flights. Um, and look on the bottom, info, the next box underneath there, the info box says the base station or the base antenna type TRMR12 none is currently not supported. Thank you for using the ARP APC offset field instead. We hope to support your antenna type after one of the next software updates. When that, if you don't see that box uh, or you've actually read the change logs and you see that they've updated it to include the R12s, then you'll know that you don't have to keep doing all those extraneous steps that we've done before. Um, but for now we have to do it. So just keep note, watch these uh, readout screens um, it'll take a little while to work through all of these. It's a lot of data that it's it's geotagging. Um, and it's basically creating uh, an output folder. So moving on to that step. Uh, once everything's been processed, an output folder will be generated in the flight project folder. Um, so if you were to click into, in this case, for example, dangerman one underscore RGB underscore July 2022 flight zero one, uh, there's your output folder. It'll be one of the three or four folders that are in there. Um, and it will have two different files in there. You will see uh, one that ends in geotags and one that ends in report. It'll be a CSV and a PDF file. Uh, copy that CSV file and paste it and change it to read geotags underscore corrected. So what we're doing here is we're making sure that the raw data is not changed. We are using a corrected data set to apply our Opus solution to, and that's the next step. Um, because based on where you work, uh, the altitude that the Wingtra is flying needs to be corrected relative to the, to the true altitude. 
Um, and then open the version ending in underscore corrected for our next step of pre-processing. So this is what it'll look like. You'll see uh, num number, image name, longitude, latitude, altitude, yaw, pitch, roll, accuracy, horizontal, accuracy, vertical. Um, old versions of Wingtra Hub did not have columns F through J. Um, we have added a new column in this image called altitude underscore corrected. And what this is, is pretty obvious, right? It, it's, it's a corrected altitude so that uh, we are accurately uh, representing the altitude that the Wingtra was flying at. Um, so back to our Opus solution. We care about these two numbers now, our ellipsoidal height and our orthogonal height. We need to compare them and use those as an offset value for our altitude. So the adjustment value is equal to the ellipsoidal height minus the orthogonal height. Uh, in this case, it turns out to be negative 36.384. Again, that's okay. Um, it's usually a negative number, especially if you're working along the coast because our geoid is uh, very funky um, around the coast. And most of our data sets are, because there's not really good ways to tie those down in, in coastal areas. Um, so you're gonna use uh, that specified adjustment altitude value uh, for the entire column and you're gonna subtract it again. So uh, this, uh, I just show the, the equation that I use up there, uh, D2, which is referencing the cell to the left of uh, E2, minus, and then in parentheses, your offset value. Two minuses make a plus. We're adding L uh, altitude to it um, to accurately correct the data set. Um, so there we get the original was 103 meters, but really we're 139.39 meters uh, above uh, mean sea level. So after that, you have to do that for each of your different flight project folders. Um, and if you have multiple days, you'll have to do it for those days as well. So basically you just have to make sure that all your data is corrected because this is what we're going to import into uh, Agisoft, which is the primary product that we use for photogrammetric processing. Um, and then we'll apply that to the reference information there. Uh, but it kind of, for now, we're keeping all of these separate and we will apply the proper fixes in Agisoft. So congratulations, uh, if you made it this far and you have data sets that you are happy with, your next stop is photogrammetry. Um, the next tutorials will be geared towards Agisoft. Uh, I personally do not use Pix4D, uh, it's just preference. Um, I like to twist the gears a little bit more, so we use Agisoft. Uh, if you are using multispectral data, uh, for example, if you're using the Red Edge P, which is, or the Red Edge MX, which is the MicaSense, uh, or the Altum, I suppose, uh, are the data sets that, or the sensors that Wingtra has. Um, if they are PPK enabled, and not all of them are, but if they're PPK enabled, it'll be the same steps to process the PPK solution. Uh, once we get into Agisoft, there will be some wildly different steps that we have to take, whether we're processing RGB data or the multispectral data, but we'll get into that in future videos. Um, but for now, feel free to email me with any questions if you're part of uh, Dr. Ian Walker's Sand Lab, um, or provide commentary below in the comments. Um, and if I see it and I'm able to help out, I, I definitely try to. Uh, but until the next video, enjoy, happy processing, and uh, safe flying. Thank you.